I guess we are fine to start. Hi everyone, I'm really thankful to all of you for being here and sharing this half an hour with us. I'm going to talk about the UX copy and about its importance in products. First of all, let me very quickly introduce myself. I'm Mary, as you have most probably read out here, and I'm Scrum Master at Ucraft. And we are currently working at our soon to be launched product and it's going to be an e-commerce platform. An intellectual one is going to have an AI and it's going to help you to create your e-commerce shop just in a matter of minutes. So why am I telling you about this right now is to make later connections about the UX copy and the product and um, how we are going to work on that. So first of all, I'd like to start by asking you, do you have any idea about what the UX copy or the UX writing is? Like, can you describe to me in a couple of words, what do you imagine it is? Any ideas? No, yeah. That's, that's quite right. For instance, imagine guys, you have just downloaded an application on your phone. It does not really matter what application. It can be, for instance, an application for taxis or for ordering food or whatsoever. And it starts for sure by asking you if you already have an account or do you want to register. Imagine you downloaded it and a message pops up. That's exactly a UX copy. That's exactly where the product starts to interact with you, even though you don't really realize how important it is. The very first seconds, how it comes up to you and asks you, for, for instance, are you uh, already a user or you need to register? And then you start by filling in your password and then the username, or you start to register via writing your email and then it says, okay, we have sent you a confirmation email to, uh, to your email, please go click there so that it can direct you to your profile. So it is the user experience and the practice of crafting the customer facing text or copy that appears within the design of digital products is the very first touch point where you start to interact with the product. Um, I'm more than sure that every one of you is interacting with applications, with websites and things like that on their daily basis and you have most probably noticed that there are lots of animations, many visual feedback or micro animations and most probably you are paying enough attention to it. But when it comes to the UX copy, it's the one that helps you to navigate through the product and it's the one that makes you understand if you wanna go on and use the product or not. Imagine you are reading a very interesting article in a website and then out of nowhere, a message pops up and it says, do you want to subscribe to our channel or you want to stay uninformed. This is a very good example of how the UX copy should not be, because this is a very good example of a passive aggressive text that makes you rethink your idea of subscribing here, because it's kind of insulting and offensive from their side to call you uninformed as if you were uninformed until that very moment. Of course, the idea behind that most probably could have been that they wanted to sound funny, ironic or sarcastic or whatsoever, but I don't really think that any of you would like to see that. So in that very moment, you start to rethink and you feel like you most probably should not subscribe here. And this is how you can annoy your customers and this is why you have to be extremely careful what do you use in your product and how do you use it. Let's move forward. Here I brought some examples of applications that I have been using and uh, most of you have been using. For instance, the Spotify. At first, uh, like you cannot enter, there is an authentication error and then it says, check your email. Um, I'm sorry, it cannot be seen very well, but the, but the idea behind this, it is in a very friendly manner and it kindly asks, asks you to redirect your email and to make sure that you have uh, tapped on the right link to come back to Spotify and continue to use your account. The other one is the part where you have forgotten your email or, or username 
And the other one is one example of this taxi application, and I'm going to talk about it a bit more. I have tried to um, order a taxi in the area of Armenia, and it says, our delivery services are not yet available in this area. And then it brings another button which says, send to another area. First of all, this may seem just a very simple text which says, our delivery services are not yet available. But if you go a little bit deeper, you understand the positive touch that they added to this little message which says, are not yet available, which subconsciously lets you think that maybe sometime later, if you start to use this application once more, it can be available. Also, it brings another suggestion which says, send to another area. Just in case you think that it's not working here, you, if you want to test something or if you want to try something, you can do that in completely different areas. So it gives you the chance as well. Um, if you start to read about the UX copy, it's just a huge world that brings so many ideas, so many do's and don'ts, that most of them are probably true and most of them are probably right. And of course, you have to take into account in what product you are working. But here are the three basic things that you have to do in order to keep it very smooth, very reachable, and very helpful to your users. Because you have to always keep in your mind that it's the very first touch point of you interacting with your user. Imagine you have done a very great job in designing the product. It's really awesome. The colors, the interface, everything, the functionality. But the UX copy, like the part which the user sees actually, is not good. Believe me, they are going to leave it. They are going to ditch the application and they are going, or the website, and they are going to look for a new one. So let's have a look what the 3S criteria basically means. The first one says it should be clear. The second one says it should be concise and finally consistent. I don't want to read this out loud for you because I'm going to bring a deeper example about this. And let's start from the clear one. So let's have a look at these two examples. The first one, um, it says failure. And then it says an authentication error has occurred. And then the second one says, signing error, you entered an incorrect password. Let's imagine that we are not very technical and we are using the application, we try to log in and it says an authentication error has occurred. And at that very moment you start to think, what the hell does this even mean, an authentication error? How can it not authenticate me or, or what's wrong with this? And then uh, you don't know what to do, most probably you will panic or you will try to um, rewrite the password or the email or you will go to the email to understand what's going wrong. So this means that this message is not clear at all. It gives you some information, but it does not say exactly what's wrong with it. Let's have a look for, at the second one, which says sign in error. And then it says you entered an incorrect password. You don't have to be very technical to understand what an uh, incorrect password means, right? You just understand that there was a mismatch when writing the password, and you immediately move forward and you start to write the new password, or you understand that you don't even remember the password, and then you have to uh, make sure that you create a new one. In any case, this gives you like a very clear message of what went wrong and how can you make sure that it's uh, done very well. The second one is to keep this uh, UX copies very concise. What does that mean? Let's have a look at the examples, guys. The first one says, oops, we cannot find the hotels you were looking for at this time. And then comes the button which says, try again. And the second one is error. And then it says some uh, text which cannot be understood very well. Like a failed uh, booking engine, which is also uh, which also contains typos and then comes bad requests in brackets, multiple hotel results or no results, and then the button is pretty long and not very uh, user friendly, let's say, and it says click here to start over. So in the very first case, it says we couldn't find the hotels you were looking for at this time, which means that at this time we couldn't find it and it's pr pretty concise, like we cannot find this time, which means that may maybe they um, don't suggest the hotels that you were looking for or something went, went wrong or you should come back at some other time because they do mention that at this very time they cannot find it. 
Meanwhile, the second one is not very well written at all because it contains typos and then it's not professional at all. It feels like you are looking at a code because of these brackets and everything. And then you start to understand that you don't understand anything at all. And then it makes you just quit the application or the search engine or whatever you were using. And then there is this button which does not look nice at all because the text is already pretty long itself and it's not very nice to see that under, right? And here we have the consistent one, guys. Um, we have been working at our upcoming product for such a long time and we have came up with this idea that we have to create our tone of voice, that we have to understand how we want to reach our users, how we want to interact with them. Because as I've mentioned before, the design is pretty cool and the functionality as well. But what is this gap that you should fill in order to keep your users or to attract them? So we have came up with this idea that we want our voice to complement our visual design. We have done a pretty good research. We have done the visual design in a very good manner and we want to keep it and we want to complement it by using a very creative and very personalized text for our users. And the characteristics defining our voice are like empowering, trustworthy, bold and fun. So basically all of these are positive characteristics because if you want to interact with your users and you want to keep them, you have to keep this positive touch and um, as you know, most probably, before the products um, are created, they are going through different stages, like research, design, the content strategy, and the active development, and everything. And right now, we are in the very part of this uh, very fast-moving environment that we need to pay attention to the UX copy. And the Google started to uh, make sure that they incorporate this part to their product development cycle. So they started from research, the design, and then the content strategy and the UX writing. Because they also firmly believe that that's the very touch point to the customers and it's the one that can fill the gap between them. I want to bring a very personal example of mine where this UX copy helped me um, through my uh, user navigation and in general how it can change the experience of people. So once I was out of Armenia and I, and I just had in mind that I wanted to go and have a very long walk down the city center. And I opened, uh, by accident, I was navigating through my phone and I by accident opened this app for the taxi. It's called Cabify, I don't know if you're acquainted with it. It's like um, Uber, like uh, Yandex or Gigi, like one of them. It has a very good interface. It's pretty cute, the colors. It's really attractive. So by accident, I opened it and like at, uh, at a matter of seconds, a message popped up to me. It says, Mary, we really take care of your help and we know it's pretty hot outside. We don't want you to walk under the direct sunlight. And that's why we are offering you a promo code. I swear to you guys, I had no intention of ordering a taxi, but just the message, just the personal touch of theirs and the caring tone of voice they had made me order a taxi and to take it to the city center. And this is how they can really attract the customers and they convert their customers from just being a basic user to an active user. Because once you do this, once you add this, you make sure that you keep, you keep your customers with them. So um, in order to make sure that your UX copy is done well, you have to make sure that all the information that you provide is not meant to manipulate your users to, use, to using your application or website, but rather to, um, to leading them and to making sure that they do the sign up and they do it with their will. And also just a very small tip that always helps the applications or the websites to use your uh, product is to add a human touch. The next example I want to bring is this example of Duolingo app. I bet many of you know about it or use it. And uh, this is a very good example of how a mechanized little mascot can help you feel that you need to come back to, to the application. You need to use it once again. And you need to make sure that you follow all the steps because it, all, all the time they pop up you notifications or messages saying, oh, it seems like you haven't been using our app for two days or for three days. You need to come and follow up with us. You need XP's to bring back, which means that the human touch that they added, 
just helps you and leads you to using their app. So what I was trying to say during this presentation is um, once you start and dig deep, deeper into the product, all the phases are very important, starting from the design to the active development to uh, making sure that the functional is working very well. But you also have to make sure that whatever the user sees, besides the um, interface and besides the good functional, is that a very good, very grammatic and very personalized text because this is the one that's going to make sure that your users are staying with you. Because no matter how good or how well you provide the rest of the uh, application or the website, once you pop up with this, disrespectful type of messages like the one that I brought you before, like you want to stay uninformed, this is not going to lead you anywhere. So I guess this was it and we have some time for the questions. If you have some, I'm, I would be happy to hear you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so I am a uh, trained DevOps engineer. So yeah. It's not, it's not my job to do the UX analysis. At least it's not my primary yeah. So uh, do you know any quick tools uh, that, for example, where I can upload the link of our website and the tool can scan that and uh, send me some suggestions, like mm -hmm. UX suggestions or something? Uh, to be honest, I don't know such a tool. But for instance, if you do a very short Google search, I bet they will appear to you because right now it's developing in such rapid uh, ways that uh, I bet there are many tools and you can just upload and as you said, the text will appear for you. And of course, what you can do afterwards is just to make sure that the suggestion is what you were looking for. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, a sub question, like yeah. do you think that uh, engineers have to be engaged more in this? Well, if you are asking me then, uh, if you are willing to do so, because I know as a QA engineer you most probably have so many things to do and you don't have some extra time to be there. But for instance, if you are coming up with a very good example of very good idea, why not to cooperate with the team? Why not to collaborate? And why not to suggest your ideas? Because sometimes when you are not into that and you're looking out of the box, you may come up with better ideas than the ones that are inside that. Thank you. Any other questions? No? OK, then that was it. Thank you.